Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is James. And in this video, let's talk about some survival stuff. You know, in an apocalyptic event, for sure, a major weather event like hurricane, tornado, a snowstorm, blizzard, ice storm, uh, heat waves. You know, it could be temporary job loss, inflation, a strike, a pandemic. We've had that case study. Um, an illness, an injury, caretaking. You could be in a rural or isolated area, off-grid living. You know, there's budgeting and cost fluctuations. There's grid failures. There's planned maintenance that could or could not happen and cause something. Quarantines, travel bans, vehicle breakdown, harvest cycles, all this kind of stuff. A lot of things could go wrong. And to different people at different times, you know, on the coast, it could be a hurricane. In the northern parts of the world, it could be an ice storm. But with all of that, you know, most of us aren't prepared when stuff happens, whether it be something very simple like your car breaks down. Some people don't even have savings to be able to pay for that. And, you know, before I jump into the video, I just want to say family and friends, that really is some of the best insurance you could have. The best safety net, the best first aid kit, the best, you know, um, thing that you could have to help you out and people helping each other. If you don't have that, and some people I know don't, they don't have any family left. They're just alone in the world, and maybe they don't have a lot of friends. I know some people like that. I'm kind of like that, I guess, if you really want to say. I don't have a lot of friends. I, I'm very blessed to still have some of my family. They live in another town, so sometimes that's awkward as well if there's something going on. You know, if an apocalypse happens, we see it in The Walking Dead and different shows and movies about, well, my kid or my family member is in a different city. So they try to get there, and the getting there is that journey, is that peril of, you know, trying to survive. But this is a video more about preparation. We'll talk about the best foods to try to stock in your pantry, but first let's go over the top survival items you'll need to have on hand to ensure your safety and well-being. If you want to make what's called a bug out bag, a few items to have in a bag in case the, you know, stuff really does hit the fan. We're not talking about a, the power was out for a few days and stuff in my freezer is going bad, or really any short time frame you might just simply be out of place. We're talking about, you know, apocalyptic level event. You want a good water filtration system. I mean, that's like first and foremost, one of the most essential and important things. If you can get some clean water tablets, they have all kinds of devices, drinking straws that filter the water. That could mean the difference in life and death. We'll talk a little bit more about food at the end of the video, but stock up on non-perishable food items, canned goods, dried fruits, nuts. You got to think about shelf life. And you definitely want a good first aid kit. A very comprehensive first aid kit is a must including bandages, antiseptics, medications, you know, especially if a person you're, you need regular medication, have some extra. Put that extra in your first aid kit if you can. Um, other medical supplies to handle any injuries or illnesses, the more the merrier probably, depending on what type of person you are. If you're very injury prone or if you're allergic to bee stings, things like that, have the appropriate stuff you need in the first aid kit. A multi-tool or a little package of multi-tool items. These can serve various purposes from cutting and opening cans to making repairs. It's versatile, it's compact, a very useful tool in a survival situation. And don't forget emergency shelter. This one's one that could or could not be on the list depending on the situation you're in, but it's always good to have something. A small tent that folds up really small can be stuck into a backpack pretty easy. Just something like an emergency shelter tent, a tarp. You need a safe place to rest and stay dry. That's the main thing. You need a fire starter, a reliable fire starter, waterproof matches, a magnesium fire starter. All of this is essential. You need a fire for warmth, cooking, signaling for help. These are also small compact stuff that you could really stick into a backpack pretty easy. A battery powered or a hand crank radio will keep you informed about weather updates, news, emergency broadcasts. You know, in apocalyptic events and tv shows and stuff like the walking dead we lost everything radio you know there wasn't really any radio a few little places along the show used it especially in the later seasons but i'm just thinking i know a lot of radio people or people that are into that kind of thing and you know there would just have to be a lot of those specific people die out for that not to still be happening and on a pretty good basis unless they just couldn't get power 
Um, there could be some smaller range stations or someone in a van or something portable that's driving around trying to spread a message. But, you know, if you could get power to one of the bigger stations, there's several big towers around that could transmit to a really, really huge footprint of an area. But you need a radio to be able to hear it. Personal protection is also pretty good to have. You know, whether it be a gun or pepper spray, a self-defense tool. In some type of events, I would say an apocalyptic event, there could be potential threats. Of course, you need a flashlight. I think that's a given. Um, most of us, whether have one in our car or truck or at our home for sure, you know, we kind of have those items sometimes already. But you need a good flashlight that you know either is a wind-up or you got good batteries of course, having some battery backup, a solar charger, something, some way to charge a cell phone or maybe a flashlight that's rechargeable. You definitely need something like that as well. I know you guys can think of some more to add to an initial bug out bag, but those are some simple items, some small items that you could really put into a backpack, a small backpack or bag and just put it up on the shelf by your coats, you know, wherever you hang your coats up or something and just know if the stuff really does hit the fan, I need to grab that bag and take it with me. Of course, there's different people out there, different ideas, different beliefs and, and what they think about different things. So your level of preparedness, your prepper level is really up to you. But definitely by having those top survival items on hand, you can be better prepared for pretty much any event that happens. So stay safe, stay prepared. That should definitely be a motto. Before I talk about the food part, I just want to touch on preparedness. That's a key word in this video, in, in this entire talk. So take the pandemic. The idea of the video is you're in that situation. Either you're out of a job and for a few weeks, what do you do? Um, you don't have savings. And that's a big thing. A lot of people don't have savings. For whatever reason, they're not able to save. But that is a big crucial thing as far as, okay, it's not the walking dead. Society hasn't broken down and money doesn't matter anymore. It's, hey, it's a pandemic type situation or another type situation where you have to relocate because of a fire or a natural disaster. The one thing about stuff like that is a lot of times there's the Red Cross. There's assistance, you know, in a situation like the walking dead, an apocalyptic event, there's no assistance. Nobody's coming to help you. But I like to say that an apocalyptic event most likely will not ever happen. There'll be hurricanes, there'll be fires, there'll be different things, weather events, and different types of things that might put you out. And whether you need savings to get you through that time, like you can still go to the grocery store, you just don't have a job for a few weeks. You know, that's where family comes in and really helps out. But preparedness is definitely something to think about. So this video is very fitting to also run over some pantry items. That's more likely what you'll need. Okay, you just need to have some food in the pantry. The power's out for a few days. You don't have a generator, so the stuff in your freezer goes bad. What do you have in your pantry? Stuff will last a lot longer in the freezer, but, you know, what do you have to eat? Do you have something to eat if you're just trapped at home for a few days, for a week, two weeks, three weeks? So when we talk about a prepper pantry, you have to think about shelf life. There's a lot of products out there now. I should have probably tried to get a uh, sponsor for this video from one of those. There's a lot of uh, places out there with the dried foods, with the foods that's supposed to last 25, 30 years. And if you can buy a bucket of that or one of the packages that will last you like a month or two, you know you're pretty much covered in most situations. If the food in it lasts 25 to 30 years, even if it tastes bad, you know, you're going to survive. Canned beans, lentils, they last maybe two to five years. You got to check the cans and stuff like that. If it's canned, you got rice and pasta. White rice can actually last pretty much forever. 30 years, say, if it's stored properly. So that's a big thing as far as you want long-term stuff, white rice. Brown rice only lasts about six months to a year because it's got a higher oil content. Uh, pasta, you know, one to two years, but I figured it might last longer and you can make it last longer if you store it in airtight containers. Canned vegetables and fruits only last one to two years. Uh, you really got to look and make sure the cans are in good condition. Peanut butter and stuff like that only last about six to nine months unopened. Canned meats and fish, two to five years. So if you get the right product, some are packaged to last a little longer. 
oats and cereal, one to two years. It, again, it can last longer if it's stored in an airtight container. That's oats, but cereal, six to 12 months. Then you got dried fruits and nuts. Dried fruits really only last maybe up to a year unopened. Nuts, six months to a year unopened. Now, different things last a lot longer in the freezer if you still have power and you can put stuff in the freezer. And did you know powdered milk lasts one to two years unopened? Unopened canned coconut milk, two to five years. It only lasts a few days once you open it. I don't personally like it. Unopened coconut oil, two to three years, but still lasts about one to two years if you store it correctly, cool, dark place, if it's opened. And you've got stuff like honey that pretty much lasts forever, so that's a good thing to have, some honey. And if you've ever had a jar for a long time, it could crystallize up. You just got to heat it up a little bit and it restores it. It's amazing. Maple syrup lasts for a pretty good bit of time. It could last several, several years when it's stored in a cool, dark place, when it's unopened. It lasts about a year once you open it, so that's a good thing to have on hand. There's not a lot of things that last 20 to 30 years, especially a wide variety of things, unless they're specially made for that, packaged for that. And that would be some of your freeze-dried meals, some of the stuff that you may have seen advertised, shelf life of 25 to 30 years. You know, especially you got to store them in a cool, dry place, you know, have the airtight packaging, all that kind of stuff. But if you're really serious about um, you want to have a backup or you live in an area that's prone to flooding or fire or hurricanes or, you know, freezing that you may be locked in for a month solid, can't get out, you know, maybe the grocery store is open, but you just can't get to it because you live in such a rural area. You know, you would have to know that, hey, I'm in a situation where I may not can get any help. I need that. Or you may live you know, in the middle of Manhattan where there's just so many people and you know that everybody in your community or your building helps everybody or, you know, you've got a good family backup system or something, you may be like, you know, uh, maybe I don't need that. Maybe I just need a few cans of beans and, you know, something like that. Just, just in case, if it's a day or two extra past me needing groceries. Because a lot of people, a lot of my friends, I mean, I guess I'm weird. I don't keep just a ton of food around um, and just keep piling it in because I like more fresh stuff, fresher stuff, I guess. But I would have to say I'm probably lacking on the food pantry and I could probably definitely do better on my savings. One of the main things with the pantry, um, having that, trying to maintain that is to rotate the stock, use the older items first and replenish it with fresh supplies when you go to the store. So that is a system I know a few people, just a few people, but um, they're prepper type people, you know, lifestyles. They they have the ham radio and the, you know, uh, uh, different things like that. They're just really more into it than, than I am. But they do the rotation thing in their pantry. They have a stocked, stocked pantry. And they, when they use something, they go to the grocery store every week, every couple of weeks or whatever, but they're just replenishing their huge pantry, like, oh, a few cans are gone. We got to, you know, they're real strict about it. They're like, we got to replace that. Good, clean water. That's very important. Having food, that's very important. If you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you listening. It's just a survival kind of talk, just a fun kind of talk, hopefully. I know there's a lot of different places in the world that's going through a lot of different things. And they have to use this information on a daily basis just because of the state of their country or whatever it may be. But I do hope and pray that, you know, none of us really ever have to worry about that. But remember the key word of the video, preparedness. Hey, you guys, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. And you know I'll join you there. This is James in Nashville. As always, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for more dead stuff.